Hello, welcome to Computational Quantum Chemistry. My name is Professor Achintya Kumar Datta. I am an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry IIT Bombay. I work in the field of computational chemistry method development. So if you are interested to know what exactly I do, you can go to my website. So in this course, we are going to use these three books as our reference. The first is Frank Jensen, Introduction to Computational Chemistry. You can see it here. The second one will be Christopher Kramer's Essential of Computational Chemistry, Theory and Models, second edition. And third one to learn the quantum chemistry we need for this course, we are going to use Donald A. McCurry. The book name is Quantum Chemistry. So the tentative topics we are going to cover in this course, first thing we are going to know what computers has to do with chemistry because chemistry is mostly done in laboratories. And in this course, we are going to use computers to solve quantum mechanics. To before going any further, we will recapitulate what we know about the basics about quantum mechanics and then we are going to proceed about the ORCA program package, which we are going to use for this course and the graphical user interface we will need. We will teach you how to install this in your laptop. We are going to know about Hartree-Fock approximation, which is basis of most of the sophisticated molecular quantum chemistry calculation and we are going to know about what is basis set, we are going to know about open shell systems and spin. What is missing is Hattery Fock is called electron correlation and we are going to know about electron correlation method and specially couple cluster which is considered as the gold standard of quantum chemistry. Of course, the most popular option is the density functional theory which is more popularly used. We are going to know about density functional theory, various functionals which are available. We are going to know about semi-empirical methods which can do calculations very rapidly. As in the chemistry we deal often with reactions, so we are going to know about geometry optimization and how to find transition states so we can calculate reaction rates. Most of the chemical processes actually takes place in the presence of an environment. So we are going to know about environmental effect, implicit and explicit solvation both. If you are dealing with heavy elements there will be relativistic effects and we are going to know about relativistic effects, how to take care of them, how to take care of the spin orbit coupling. Chemistry involves many kind of spectroscopy. We are at least going to know about IR, Raman and UV visible spectroscopy. Many interesting phenomena actually happens in a dynamic way. So we are going to know about molecular dynamics and if you are interested in biomolecular simulation, you need to know about QMM method. So that is also we are going to go about the, uh, in the course. In this course, we are going to know about the theories of the method as well as we are going to perform hands-on calculation. Now for the hands-on calculation, we are going to use the software package ORCA and for the graphical user interface, we are going to use three graphical user interface. First one is Chemcraft, the second one is Avogadro and third one is Chimerax. Now Avogadro and Chimerax are free software. Although Chemcraft is a paid software, you can get a six months free trial version. So in this course, you can use that free trial version. Now why use ORCA? There are many other quantum chemistry software packages available. Some of them are more popularly used. First advantage with ORCA is that this is very fast and it is free for academic users. So you can get this software, download this software for free. Uh, of course, it is free for academic users. If you are an industrial user, then you need to contact FACT GmbH, which deals with the industrial license of ORCA. Moreover, ORCA can be used for various kind of system. For most of the organic chemist, the standard system size is like 40 to 50 atom. This is dexamethasone. In this case, you can do the calculation. A DFT calculation can be done around two minutes and a very sophisticated DLPNO CCSDT calculation which is considered as the gold standard of chemistry that can be done about 12 minutes. So this is for a standard organic molecule. If you want to go for a protein more than 2500 atom. So to do a DFT calculation if you use PBE takes around 3 hours and if you want to go WB97X 
it takes around 5 hours. That means ORCA can do calculation for both small molecules as well as large biological systems. The more advantageous thing is that it has more than 65,000 registered user. It is a very strong popularity goal and there is a very nice forum exists for ORCA. So, if you have problems, you can post your questions, queries, doubt in the ORCA forum. I will put a link to the ORCA forum and someone or the else will answer these questions. Now, let us come to chemistry. When we think of chemistry, most of us think chemistry as this. However, in this course, I will show that chemistry can be also done like this. Now, this what you see in this file, this is actually an ORCA output file which you may see during this course. Now, when I tell my colleagues that chemistry can be done like this, they often scoff at me and this is not new. This French philosopher whose name I can never pronounce at 1838 told that any attempt to use mathematical methods for the investigation of chemical question must be considered as completely irrational and is strongly opposing the spirit of chemistry. If mathematics will ever occupy a prominent place in chemistry, an absurd idea that is fortunately is completely unrealistic, this would lead to a rapid and irreversible decay of this scientific discipline. If this is true, then what we are do going to do in this course? Well, he was proven wrong very soon by these three strange looking gentlemen. Erwin Schrodinger developed web mechanics. Werner Heisenberg developed matrix mechanics and Paul M. Dirac married the general relativity with the theories of quantum mechanics. Although we talk of Schrodinger equation, what we actually solve in computer is more close to the matrix formulation of Heisenberg. And this is one of the most famous quotation of Dirac that the fundamental laws necessary for the mathematical treatment of large part of physics and the whole of chemistry are thus completely known. And the difficulty lies only in the fact that application of these laws leads to equations that are too complex to be solved. So, what Dirac meant that the fundamental laws for physics and he says large part of physics and whole of chemistry, he was a physicist. So, he did not consider chemistry at a very high ground. They are completely known. Problem is that when you try to solve these equations, the equations becomes very complicated and too complex to be solved. And the quotes go on. Hence, it would be desirable to develop practical approximation scheme for the applications of quantum mechanics. This statement actually in a sense gives you the flavor of computational chemistry. So, what we do in computational chemistry, we use the laws of quantum mechanics, we apply them to chemical problem in an approximate format. Now, all the gentlemen we discussed before, at least the three with the quantum mechanics, they are physicists. So, the first quantum chemist came in the form of Linus Pauling and we know Pauling is famous for his molecular orbital theory. More than that, he actually written the first book of quantum chemistry which says introduction of quantum mechanics with application to chemistry. It is published in 1935. Although the molecular orbital theory is very good for diatomic and maybe some polyatomic molecule, one cannot be used it for a general molecular system. That is what we are going to see in the course. That is what an Hattrefock method actually do. Now, when Paul Dirac told that the laws of quantum mechanics are easy to apply, but the equations are too complicated, he does not have an access to a computer. And the difference started with the advent of computer where it went from theoretical to computational chemistry. So, with the computer you have truth tables which can actually deal with 0 and 1 binary numbers and this is how a logic get, this is of course a mechanical logic get looks like and this is what a modern supercomputer looks like which is space time in IIT Bombay which is of a Cray IIT Bombay supercomputing facility which has a one petaflop computing capabilities. Now, this is what is called a Moore's law that each year your number of uh, processors in a chip get doubled and the price actually get reduces to half. So, this picture is at 2030, 2013 and you can see that what they have predicted that at around 2025 you will actually get to quantum computer and that actually is happening. So, you know that there are IBM quantum computer already working, but they still cannot solve chemical problem as 
become competitive to a classical computer. Now, there is a theory, there was a mis machine, what was missing is the man. And that gap fulfilled with the advent of John Popel, Sir John Popel. So, he developed this software Gaussian 70, which is the first general purpose quantum chemistry software package, which can actually do general calculation. And this software package was actually circulated freely through quantum chemistry program exchange. We started with a free and open source software, actually get commercialized very soon. And because of his contribution on developing Gaussian, John Popel got the Nobel Prize in 1998. Theoreticians getting Nobel Prize is common in physics, not so much common in chemistry. And John Popel was the only other example where people have won Nobel Prize in doing theory in chemistry. Now, the software package was initially available freely through quantum chemistry program exchange. From 1987, it becomes a commercial program which do not give you source code in all the cases and the company went on to ban John Popel in 1994 which lead to famous ban by Gaussian controversy. If you want to learn more about it, you can search it in the internet but these days various quantum chemistry software packages are available starting from Molcas, Molpro, Turbomol, QChem, PQS, Orca, there are many more. I have just mentioned a very few and we are going to use the program package Orca for this course. Now, what we can calculate using this package? Enrico Clementi in 1975 already started claiming we can calculate everything. Enrico Clementi was one of the pioneers in doing atomic heterophog. I had the good fortune to meet him once. He's a, he's a very amazing man, but he went overboard to make this statement that we can calculate everything. After almost 50 years of his statement, we still cannot calculate everything. So what we can calculate? We can calculate actually a lot of things. We can, what we can do in order to predict quantities that cannot be measured, short-lived intermediate that never accumulated enough for the experimental studies. Or we can interpret outcome of experiments, complex NMR or EPR spectra. We can obtain insight in the regularities of data, understand the key factors that contribute reactivity trends in a series of related complex. We can predict the outcome of future experiment, how to do, how do I change the molecule in order to optimize a given property? How do I have to change the molecule in order to optimize a given property? Many other reasons and also it can tell us about many other reasons why the synergy between theory and experiment is greatly enhancing the efficiency and the depth of the scientific analysis. So with this, we will go into the laws of quantum mechanics and try to revisit them and recapitulate them a little bit. Thank you.